We've all been there before. You're in a conversation with a woman you like, she's playing with her hair, she's laughing at your jokes, she's leaning into the conversation like she cannot get enough. You think to yourself, this is my moment until your mind does this. Make him forget everything that he knows about conversations. If you can resonate with this and you're done missing out on genuine conversations with women because you run out of things to say or you give in to that voice in your mind telling you you're boring, today I'm going to share with you my IRC system and how you can use it to connect with anyone anywhere even if you're not a natural conversationalist. And I'm gonna give you a process you can use right after watching this video so you can put it to work in your current day-to-day -day life. Before I give you this system, I have to admit, conversations didn't come naturally to me. In fact, I remember walking in the dorm hallway and people asking me, hey man, what's up? And when I stopped to have a conversation with them, they would just look like they wanted to leave. It took me a few weeks to realize in the US, people say what's up to greet each other and not to speak, whereas where I was from, in Turkey, we only ask that question if we care to know. I'm saying this to let you know, even basic things in conversations felt very complex to me and I read dozens of books, I worked with mentors, I spoke to thousands of people to come up with the IRC system that I'm about to share with you in this video. Let's break down the system one word at a time. The first word, the first step starts with I. Have you ever been in a situation where you were walking down the street and someone with a huge smile and the shiny vest asked you how your day was going or whether you cared about dogs? In that moment, if you're like most people, you probably realize this person's raising money for a charity and they're trying to stop me so that I can engage with them and potentially donate, which is a very noble cause. But if you're like most people, what did you do? You maybe sped up your walk so you wouldn't have to get into a conversation or you smiled but you made sure to keep your boundaries firm so that they knew you weren't interested. Why do in moments like this we feel that tension? The reason is because that person isn't being clear with their intention. They're not answering the most basic question that human beings ask unconsciously when they meet each other which is what do you want? So the first step in this system is intention. It's being clear with why you're there in that conversation. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a bit, but let me cover the system fully first. The second step stands for radiation. No, I'm not talking about radiation used in medical imaging or to treat cancer cells. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Imagine walking into a house and you open the door, right? and there's clothes on the floor, there's loud metal music just playing, everything just looks messy. When most people have conversations, this is the energy they come into the conversation with. It's very intense. And what happens when you walk into a house like that? You feel the tension yourself and you think to yourself, man, I don't wanna be here, I wanna leave. And maybe you've had that in conversation where you had this anxiety and doubt and as a result of that, people who were having conversations with others just wanted to leave the moment you appeared. Now imagine this instead. Imagine it's Sunday and you decided to treat yourself and go to a spa. You walk in through the door, there's some relaxing music, some sound healing, there's beautiful scents like lavender or your favorite flower, whatever your favorite scent is. And then the moment you walk in, you see the plants, you see statues, you feel the energy of relaxation. When we want to connect with people, that's the energy we want to come from, an energy of relaxed warmth. So the R is radiation. We're always radiating, you're always radiating an energy. So instead of radiating energy of intensity, like going into that house with loud music and dirty clothes, you don't want people to feel unwelcome in your house, you want people to feel like they've entered a spa when they're having a conversation with you. So how do you do that? It's by radiating metta, which is a Pali word for loving kindness. In simple terms, it's being warm to people. So now we have intention, radiation, and step three is curiosity. And I'm not talking about curiosity on Monday morning where you come into work and everyone fake asks each other, 
hey, how was your weekend? So they could just get to talk about working. I'm talking about level of curiosity, where when you meet people, you drop all judgments and you come from the heart. So in this sense, all these steps are not actually linear. It's a circle that supports each other, which is very important because as an analytical person, it's really easy to think that, oh, this is just a linear process, whereas intention, you're always showing intention or you're not. Radiation, you're always radiating meta, being warm, or you're not. Curiosity, you're always being curious or you're not. Think of this as a circular process and just having that at the back of your mind will make you understand, okay, where do I wanna go in this conversation? next. Now we have all the three steps, intention, radiation, curiosity. But how do we implement this in our own conversations? Let's go through them step by step. How do we show our intention before we go into a conversation or during a conversation? It's very simple. When you're speaking to someone or you want to start a conversation, always ask yourself, what is my intention behind speaking to this person? Maybe you're at a coffee shop and someone's reading a book that you've read you really like and you want to go speak to them. Then you want to tell them that, hey man, I saw you reading this book. I read it myself and I loved it. What do you think? Maybe you see an attractive woman at the coffee shop and you want to tell her how beautiful she looks. You do not want to be the guy who accidentally tries to bump into her thinking that's a sustainable strategy. When you're clear with your intention and you tell her, hey, I know this is a bit unusual. I saw you grabbing your coffee and I thought it looked very beautiful. I had to come say hello. Showing your intention answers that question of what does this person want from me, therefore releases the tension and goes to the next step where they can feel like they're in a spa around you. When your intentions are not clear, you're inviting them into a house where intention is not clear. It's like that metal music just banging. It's dirty. People don't want to be there, right? So that's how we show intention. Now, how do we radiate meta? How do we build a warm, loving, compassionate energy? This is where this gets very interesting. Now, as you're listening to this video or you're watching it on YouTube, I want you to pause for a second, drop whatever thing you're doing, Come be with me for just a few moments. And I want you to close your eyes and imagine the thing you love the most. This could be your mom. This could be your father. This could be your sister, your brother. This could even be a cat, a pet that you have. Now as you imagine the thing you love the most and just sit with that for a few seconds, I want to ask you, do you feel more love or less love? Most people will feel more love. Now, do you feel safer or do you feel more in danger? Most people will say they feel safer because we're putting this energy, we're putting our focus into our heart. And when you're in the heart, the world is not as dangerous. Now really feel into that. Keep imagining the thing you love the most. If you get distracted, your mind gets carried away, just come back to that feeling. Now, imagine extending this feeling outwards into the world. This is how you radiate a warm, relaxed energy. Now, if this is a new practice for you and you're used to spending time in the mind, it will take time to build. So don't rush yourself. Don't judge yourself, but you can come back to this process and really sit with that energy in the heart. And what's going to happen is people will feel this from you even when you're having the exact same conversation with the people you meet. So you can keep imagining the thing you love the most or as a reminder, if you do this as a meditation for a few minutes in your house, when you go out, I can take this and I can use this as an anchor to be with the thing I love the most as I'm in conversations with people. So if it helps you, pick a physical anchor that you can carry around that you see. And then whenever you see it, you're like, oh yeah, I want to imagine the thing I love the most and be with that warm feeling as I'm socializing. Because if you look at all your problems conversationally, 
it stems down to a feeling of being unsafe in the conversation and therefore not knowing what to say. So the more you can sit with your heart, the more safe you'll be. And as you state your intentions as well, the conversation will flow very naturally. The third step is curiosity. So I have a funny story around this. When I was growing up, my mom would come back from her work and she would walk up to my room and ask me about school. And I would be playing League of Legends, wanting to go back to the game as fast as I can. So when she asked, did you like school today? I'd say yes. When she asked, did you do your homework? I'd say yes, because I wanted to just keep playing the game. And she'd get quite frustrated around this, but both her and I didn't know why these conversations were getting stuck. The thing was, my mom would ask me yes or no questions that I could quickly answer and get out of. And maybe you're doing the same thing in your conversations. You meet someone and you ask them, oh, do you like living here? Or do you like reading? And then even though you're trying to be curious, because it's a yes or no question, people are not responding the way you want. So instead, you want to ask open-ended questions. Focus on what, how, why, when, and really tune into the emotion with that hard space you're in. So you may ask someone, how do you enjoy living here? What are your favorite things to do here? What made you get into yoga? And the more you'll ask those questions, the easier you'll find people will open up to you and then you will see it wasn't you they were rejecting, it was just that you didn't know how to lead the conversation with the right questions. Okay, we've covered what the IRC system is and how to implement it step by step, but how do you fit this into your own life if you're someone who is busy, who doesn't have eight, 10 hours a day just to socialize? Before I get to that, let me show you how well this system works. This is the system I use with my client Kyle, who is a consultant in a big four company. And he went on a date using this system and the woman said this was the best date that she had been on. It's also the same system we use with my client Sheldon, who was a Google engineer stuck after the first date getting ghosted, getting flaked on, and got into a relationship with his ideal partner using the principles in the IRC system. He also helped Mr. Rem, who came to us with no dating experience and then was able to connect with women using stating his intentions, radiating meta, and being curious about the woman that he was meeting. So this stuff works really well, and here's how you can fit the practice into your daily life. The first part I would start with is radiating meta, being in that relaxed, warm energy. So if I were you, I would set 10 to 15 minutes aside a day to ask yourself the question, to think of the thing you love the most and feel that energy coming into you, and to just sit with that. See how safe you feel without your environment changing at all. See how comfortable you become in this space that you're in. As you sit in that space more, your mind's going to build that neural pathway so that accessing that energy becomes more and more natural. So don't be discouraged if this feels challenging, if the mind intervenes at the beginning. Think of this as learning how to ride a bike. At the beginning, it's gonna be hard, but when you get this flow, when you get to connect with this energy, you're gonna be able to connect with people from a completely different space. The second step is the intention. When it comes to showing your intention and building this practice, it's very simple. If you're at a networking event, go tell that person you wanted to go speak to him and explore a business opportunity. If you see an attractive woman at a coffee shop where you're reading your book, go tell her she looks beautiful. Get used to asking yourself, what is my intention here? And from a compassionate lens, sharing that intention with the world. Now, how do we practice curiosity? It's very simple. You're probably already speaking to your family, speaking to your friends, going to business meetings, having casual conversations at work. Use the questions of what, when, how, and listening into the emotional anchors in your day-to-day -day life. This doesn't have to be something you'll spend extra hours on to practice. This system can already fit in your day-to-day -day life. In this video, I cover the IRC system, how you can use it, 
to connect with anyone you meet, even though you don't feel naturally gifted in conversations and the step-by-step process that you can start implementing today. However, everything I just share with you is completely useless. If you don't know where to go to find the ideal woman and people that you want to connect with. So check out this video where I break down my exact system to reverse engineer the best places to go for your personality type and your interests where you're most likely to find people that you would resonate with.